rose tones and these sweet kind of berry tones, but they've been blackened out by some of this spice, which is very interesting. Um, so the perfume I'm talking about today is a perfume that I made last year called Arbor. And I'm very excited to talk about this one for the last episode because it has a lot of um, ideas behind it and I have a lot of it the creative process is still very much in my mind um, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to relay some of that to you guys watching. So, in May of last year, 2019, I contacted the National, Arboretum, the National Arboretum of Australia, which is based here in, in Canberra where I, where I work and, and live, and I set up a meeting with them and we talked about the creation of a, of a, um, of a, what's called a, a site specific scent or a, um, sort of a place perfume where I would take these ideas about the Arboretum and create a perfume that could be a kind of, kind of what's called a talisman where you have these this physical object that's a representation of all these complex things. So I met with um, I met with them and then kind of didn't do anything for a month or two. I was just sort of thinking on it. At the time, I was working heavily on a perfume called Portrait of My Birthplace, which is another one from last year. And so around the middle of winter, I started working on um, the mind maps for Arbor. And before I had done that, I had done a number of visits to the Arboretum, which was really interesting. I, I sort of found myself exploring, uh, for people who aren't familiar with the Arboretum, the, the Arboretum is set up in a way where you can walk through different sections and they have a, a bonsai sort of garden and then they have these um, Himalayan and Lebanese cedar wood forests and um, which are the oldest parts of the arboretum um, but they have hundreds of different species of, of plants and trees there and so a lot of the research actually involved physically going to the arboretum um, and there were some lovely moments where I would visit and the sort of Canberra has very intense winters and the winter sun would reach its sort of apex in the afternoon and I would go through some of these cedarwood forests and the sun would hit them, hit the wood and make these, these sorts of amazing smells, these golden wood scents that were really beautiful and quite profound. Um, I, like a lot of perfumers and a lot of people in general, particularly who live in Canberra, have an incredible relationship, uh, a special relationship with nature. And so the Arboretum is a very particular and important representation of that. And so I, um, I essentially spent a month or two just doing research before ever picking up a pipette or, or looking at a formula or anything. And um, one of the big ways I did that was that I went to um, their website where you can go onto the National Arboretum website and look at every single species. You can go off and kind of copy and paste bits into Wikipedia from their website. And they have, it's an incredible, it's an incredible encyclopedia of, of um, plant botany. It's really, it's quite something. So I went through all of that and was just keeping track of what kind of, um, what particular plants and trees were, were potentially applicable to the world of perfume, taking from the Arboretum and, and placing it into my, my own context as a creative and some of the materials that I know are used in perfume already. And so that took quite a long time. I recommend checking out their website so you know what I'm, what I'm talking, maybe I can link that later. Um, I was also really influenced by the, the Zen Bonsai Gardens at the Arboretum. Um, they have these lovely, perfectly sort of maintained um, 
little sculptural um, bonsais there that, that are really breathtaking and interesting. And I, I was really inspired and ended up doing a bit of research about the Zen of, of, and the art of, of bonsai and kind of um, listening to how it's done and the sort of the approach of um, the approach of some of some of the best artists who, who, who create and maintain the bonsais um, was really curious and very interesting. And from the, that sort of research, I created what I'm going to show you now, which was the very, very first um, mind map, which my camera won't pick up the fine details of it, but just so you get the rough idea, which was this fellow here. Um, and it's just sort of bringing together some really loose ideas that I had. And some, some of the words I wrote down here, just as a brainstorm for the scent, were things like uncluttered, peaceful, zen, less is more, clarity, brilliance, um, balance, these kinds of ideas, sort of just trying to take some of this stuff down into, into physical sort of form. Um, and so from there, after a bit more research, I created a second mind map, which I will show you guys now, which was this one here. So it's, it's a lot, it's considerably more detailed. I have more sections. So each sort of main section has a lot of different branches. So like down here, you'll have like a main section which says fixatives and then all these sorts of little tendrils explaining different parts of the perfume. And this was, what I tend to do with the mind maps is I'll, I'll, I'll make many of them and, and, um, and change different colors and introduce, maybe I'll, I'll put them on poster paper and different sizes and that kind of thing, just to sort of, um, just to kind of, build up on the idea a bit. And so as I do that, the idea becomes more specific and more fine tuned. So that ended up being the kind of working mind map for the set. And I, um, a, a couple of things I ended up taking from just the research were, um, were that there was a surprisingly large number of flowering plants that very few people knew about that were native to the Arboretum. Um, things like um, magnolia flowers, Mexican orange blossom, um, certain kinds of um, wattle trees and um, lavender and carnations and um, figs and different kinds like pistachio, pistachio nuts and um, these kinds of unique little flower, flower fruit combinations as well. Um, so you can see that it started to kind of build. I started to be able to have these ideas where I know it needs to have a real focus on, um, obviously having the perfume called arbor, which just means tree in, in Latin. Um, it needs to have a focus on these trees and these, and, um, one, another way I did that was, was bringing in um, I, I believe there was a number of trees that produce resins that are useful to humanity. So the, um, in the Arboretum, they have Styrax trees and Oriental gum trees, which have been used in perfume and in, in um, ritualistic ways forever, essentially. So I knew that was going to be part of it as well. And um, so based on that, I've shown the mind maps, the, um, I started with this idea of um, building on how to bring together sort of these, th these three concepts of Rose, Lily of the Valley, and Jasmine. And they were, I consider those to be sort of the holy trinity of, of perfume in some ways. And so I took, um, I took two to three different rose oils a Moroccan rose oil, a um, Turkish rose oil, 
and a French rose oil and built those together as the kind of heart note. I have here a very, very simplistic, well, it's a very rough version of that. Again, my camera probably won't pick up on a lot of it. But just up here is, is the sort of heart note thing that I started with. So I, I started with a whole bunch of different floral notes that uh, added up to about 16 different ingredients. And so I was trying to, which is a fair amount to start with, and so I was trying to kind of um, bring all these disparate ideas together in, in, in a way that there was both a sense of traditionalism and a sense of um, ambition, really. I'll, I'll kind of on that note as well is this idea of, um, I don't know how many of, of the people watching this are familiar with Jane the Virgin, which is a Netflix show. Um, it's sort of in the, this is kind of more the, the post game me looking back on how the creative process went for me. But um, after I completed the scent, I realized that there was a lot in common with, um, with this show called Jane the Virgin. And this show is a telenovela, sort of. Um, a telenovela is sort of the Southern American um, and Central American version of a soap opera. So it has the tropes of certain kinds of serial television, I suppose. But as I was watching this show, which takes a while to fall in love with, I began to not only fall in love with it, but I understood that it was genius and that it was taking these ideas of extreme popular um, parts of television and, and mixing them up and making them, saying unique human things about them. And um, uh, it wasn't necessarily um, particularly experimental or ambitious or, or ambitious in ways that I considered to be normally ambitious, but nevertheless, I found it so compelling and that's seriously saying something, because I'm not a massive, massive fan of, of that style of TV. And I think a good way of understanding parts of this perfume is, is through that framework of saying, well, in many ways the perfume has a, a very obvious tip of the hat to certain ideas of convention and... Um, and respect to tradition, I think. But at the same time, it has all this new life and little quirks and, and, and little brilliances put down into it so that you end up with um, breath of fresh air, a breath of fresh air into a very well-known and, and, and well-understood um, structure of a perfume. So. Sure, it's a floral perfume with three different main floral elements, but there's kind of all these different ideas that, that pull through it. And then it obviously ties together with the arboretum. So you have this, this pulsation of meaning, meaning um, which I really find interesting. And so I started off with those sorts of 15 different sort of floral ingredients, combining the lily, the jasmine, and the rose. Um, the heart note of that, that sort of heart note creation process there took so, so long. It was uh, about 45 drafts just for the heart note. Um, the whole scent sort of as a whole ended up with, I think, more than 150 drafts, which is a record for me. And um, I probably ended up pouring about 300 hours into it. And so... I sort of fixed fixed the perfume on this idea of of jasmine and, and lily of the valley and, and rose, with the heart note focusing on this this rose and lily idea, um, and then I built on that, building a, a citrus idea that connected with the Mexican orange blossom that I mentioned, having found in the archives of the arboretum, and. Combine that with a number of different citrus oils, 
because I knew this perfume was going to be launching in October, which is spring here. And so it needs to have certain kinds of, um, certain kinds of tones and textures to mix and match with that kind of time of weather, the time of the year. Um, again, respecting the fact that, that seasons matter and, uh, and that the perfumer can, that a perfumer can work around, um, the changing weather of, of the world in a way that is a creative, um, a kind of creative explosion in some ways. Um, and so I built this idea around, um, sweet orange, blood orange, a couple of different kinds of, um, orange flower, and I believe maybe lemon and bergamot as well. So kind of bringing together these light tones with these floral tones uh, as a way of building the beginning of the scent, having a softness. This posed quite a, saying the word softness, this posed quite a problem because uh, you, it has to, um, it has to be said that it's, it's difficult to make perfumes that have a sense of um, discretion and, and delicate character without kind of becoming um, lost or, or very difficult because there's no drive. And so that was something that I ended up battling with really intensely at the beginning because I, I couldn't quite f figure out how to build in these ideas of intensity as well as um, feminine elegance. I think I was, fi I was focusing a lot on the elegance. Um, as a result of that, I built around those, those two ideas, the citrus and the floral idea, with this, these different kinds of um, narcotic intense floral ideas. So bringing in things that are kind of white floral ideas and jasmine ideas as well. A lot of those actually all of those did not work and I, I created some interesting stuff but it was it felt very um aesthetically petite i don't know just kind of kind of confusing and, and not quite right and i and was missing a bit of soul and so i threw those i, I threw those 20 ideas out and forgot about that section for a while and then worked on the base note, which was um, this idea of sandalwood benzoin resin, um, which, uh, well, there are two kinds of benzoin resin, why not, we'll go into that. One from Siam, one from Sumatra, and the Siam one is much more sweet. It has more of a chemical in it called vanillin, which makes, is what makes vanilla smell sweet and, and like vanilla. So I was combining these sorts of um, very, very deep, warm, sort of shiny, uh, resinous scents with, um, again, with a number of woody ideas, sort of focusing on the Himalayan cedar wood as well, um, and having this kind of um, soft and hard idea going on and, and, and building something that was both gentle and really t tenacious. So I ended up also bringing in something called ambrette seed, which is a Peruvian plant-based musk, essentially. And it has this sort of beautiful smell of, um, of clean sheets mixed with a kind of beautiful nuttiness. And so giving the, sense, giving the perfume a sense of, of longevity as well was really important in that section of the perfume. And then I tried to put all of those elements together in the best way I could. And it took, um, it took 10 different trials of the final idea, which is a lot. Um, that was a really difficult part of the process because of how, how much trouble it, it had coming together as a perfume. Um, but I ended up throwing out some of those ideas, 
readdressing what I was going to, trying to make and to, to sort of, uh, I, I believe I, I changed the heart note and, and picked a different version because as I said, there was about 45 versions to pick from. So there was a lot um, and it was quite difficult to figure out which was, which was right. And um, in that sense, it was a little like trying to write a novel or something because there was so much going on. I had worked on it so, so deeply and for, for many months that it was, it was a, a process of, of, of great adventure and, and challenge and I think, um, and discovery and pro probably rediscovery as well. So what I ended up doing was building a sort of a fourth mind map maybe where I sort of said, okay, here's the heart note. Here's this citrusy idea I've made. And here's this middle idea, which should involve Jasmine that hadn't worked. And then here's the bass note. And what I ended up doing was recreating um, the citrus idea a couple of different times so that I had two citrus, citrus notes that were very slightly different that I both really liked, that were simplified and, and more bright and, and um, had more lift to them. And then I threw out all the complexity with that jasmine idea and just brought in some pure jasmine oil. And before then, in a lot of my other compositions, I only really use jasmine oil in, a, in sparing ways or I'll dilute it down um, for ease of use. It's just one of those things that blends in an easier way. So I brought in pure jasmine oil and chucked out the rest of the ideas that I was working on for that section of the perfume. And it started to make a lot more sense. Now, Arbor is, is particularly interesting because when I go to bring these elements together, instead of what is normally in perfume, say three elements of a perfume that are all finished structural parts that you then bring together into one, I have six or seven parts that are structurally different and essential to the final scent. So it's quite a complex layering. Um, I believe I explained it something so, somewhat similar with Bennu RH48, which is in one of the previous episodes. But you end up layering this perfume where you have a heart note and then above it you have two top notes, uh, which is very, which is different and unique. You usually wouldn't do that in perfume. You'd have one heart note, one one top note rather, and so these two play off each other and work with the heart. And then on top of that, you have this pure jasmine note, which is really interesting and gives the scent a real sense of sensual purpose. It gives the scent a, a kind of grounding and floral, um, a floral character that is that really answers to no one. It's, it's quite an impressive bit. And then on top of that, to finish it, you have two separate bass notes where, you ha where they're very similar, like they have almost the exact same thing in them, give or take one or two ingredients, but their quantities are different and I use both of those in the set as a kind of layering of complexity and a way of filling out a compositional framework that was very challenging to me because for people who are familiar with my stuff, a lot of the work that I create is tonally sort of explore in an, and in an explorate, an explorative way um, and just compositionally really different from, from Arbor. Um, and maybe because of its relationship with with, with particular ideas of, of tradition. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's, that's basically our board in a 34-minute explanation. Um, given that today is the very last um, show, I just wanted to say thank you once again. Um, I have a couple of announcements. And the first is, if you recall watching my very first video, which please do if you haven't, um, highly recommend it. I 
mentioned that I was working on a perfume or a scent sort of idea called The Last Thylacine. And I recently finished that, which is really exciting. So you got to sort of see the mention of the creation of it and the done, the done, um, the done process. So um, for anyone who would like to, to uh, have a sample of it, um, you can leave a comment or send me a message. It's very interesting. I'm hoping to eventually turn it into a fully fledged scent, like a full composition. But if you'd like a little sample of the actual idea that I focused on, um, I'm happy to make some up for you and send it to you. Um, other than that, I'm still doing my, um, my little personal perfume commissions. So if anyone out there would like, um, they're $110 and you, you just, um, buy, buy them on, up on my Etsy. And then, um, we have a little chat about what you'd like to have made. They usually take a few weeks to do. They're a lovely way for people to engage with the process of a personal perfume being created for them, but at a tenth of the price of, of my normal compositional commissions. And very last thing is I have still have a GoFundMe page where if you would like to um, support what I do but don't want to buy anything that I create, you can donate to to that page and um i'll put the links in the video so i guess that's all um if you've watched these 10 videos and enjoyed them please like and subscribe and follow me on facebook at sonic alchemy or on our instagram also at sonic alchemy scent art i have a youtube channel now as well which this will be going up on and great well thank you so much again and if you have any ideas for any other videos, I would love to hear about them. And please uh, leave a comment if you've liked this. So, yeah, I guess thanks again for watching and uh, stay safe out there, guys. All right. Have a good one. Bye.